following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Field, exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. Hey, welcome to the show. It's Hope Day. Thank you, Wayne Stop. The official flavor of the Dallas Cowboys, where flavor gets it, its wings. I had a big old fat meal from Wing Stop last night. I got that Ooh, family nice. combo, split it with the wife, ate most of it by myself, got some in the fridge I'm going to have for lunch <laughs> after the show. Thank you, SWBC members, for sponsoring the living room. And welcome to the show, Nate Newton, Jesse Holly, Kurt Daniels, Chris Beam on the, on the ones yeah. and twos. How are we feeling today, fellas? We got two days. Oh, yeah. Hey, how about if I put this mic on? Thanks for reminding me that, Chris. Um, <laughs> okay. That might help you out a little bit. So, so, so now, no, Shannon, did you eat Did you eat the boneless wings and the woman who wears the pants in the house eat the wings stop, with the bone stop, in them? Stop, Jesse. Stop, Jesse. <laughs> was it ranch or was it blue cheese? I'm just trying to see who wears the pants tonight. So the, person who, the person who eats the chicken with the bone in it, what's called a chicken wing, uh-huh. that who, that's who wears the pants in the house. So which one did you have, Shannon? We both ate boneless. We both ate boneless. Well, let, let, let me ask this question, <laughs> Shannon, right quick, like right before we get started. Okay. I don't believe Was you. this an 88 piece that you were eating? Because the way you explained it, it's a lot of food. It, that had to be. A, yeah. I split it with the wife. I ate it all by myself. I had a bunch left. I put it in the refrigerator. So how how many pieces was this? What all did you have? Let me see. Let me let me look it up. I'm gonna look it up. You guys, okay. say, <laughs> you guys say hi to each other. And, and, and number two, I want to say once again, Jesse has brought it the wardrobe again today. Thank you, Jesse. Looking good. You okay, here it is. Got my yeah, name. you you, you so special funny. man. Here it is. Me and Kurt, guy, Lee Kurt, he kicking us to the curb, man. No, we need to get a pick. Well, you look no. better than me, Kurt, so I need to pick up my game. <laughs> I need to pick up my game. Here it you is. Bulls it's fan, Jesse, I guess, the Jordan. Uh, Jordan. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Jordan. you know he got 800 pair of Jordans. Come on. I used to. I used to. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> did Jordan influence your decision to go to UNC, or did you just go there because that's the only offer you got? No, it was that, um, that duffel bag that – magically appeared outside my grandmother's front Ah, room. you got Ooh, one of those? Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting on his dad in a duffel bag showed up. Oh, daddy in a duffel bag. Oh, it's yeah. better than daddy. <laughs> the one time I was on the porch waiting, I was like, this is better than my dad showing up. Book bag showed up. <laughs> awesome. Here it is, Kurt. Nate, it's the 24-piece family pack. It's got... Oh. 24 okay. boneless or classic bone-in wings with up to three flavors, large fries, veggie sticks, and three dips. That's not what I had. Okay. I had, cool. we had That's a lot. We had, That's a lot. We had two. No, we had two wing, two eight-piece wings and a six-piece tender and a large fry. That's what we had. That's the pack they have okay. around here. So, yeah. So, there we go. Right. So, I got a little bit left in the fridge. All right. Let's get to some football, fellas. <laughs> Enough with the pleasantries. <laughs> Cowboys have beaten the Giants seven straight times. What does that mean? Is every game a new game, or are there such things? Do, does, does that do do when a team owns you like that? Does it get in your head going into the next game, or is it just a clean slate going into every game? As a player, so that'd be you, Nate. You're Jesse. Not <laughs> jump in anytime. Pretty boy, Michael. Jesse. Is my mic on? Pretty poor. Is this mic working? <laughs> I mean, no, pretty hear- dress, Jesse. Whatever we, you want. <laughs> we hear you, Shannon. Um, it, it's it's it gives you confidence to know that we beat a team seven times he, in a he row. He was team. trying. You freezing, Jesse? Can y'all hear him? No, he, they can hear him online. What he was yeah. trying to say is it gives you confidence as a team that you're going into. Like the Cowboys, they have confidence. They've beaten this team. They know this team. They play them twice a year, and they've been playing them every year for God knows when. And now it's for a, a spot at a playoff. If they win, they go. If the, if the Washington team lose, 
if the Washington team win, neither one of us goes, it don't make a difference. But, hey, if that Washington team lose and the Cowboys, this is going to be a classic battle. You, may, uh, you shouldn't see a lot of penalties, pre-snap penalties and all of that stuff in this game because guys are going to be focused. I think Jesse is back. Did you move, Jess? No, I'm good. I'm waiting. I'm okay, waiting. go ahead on. Go ahead on. Go ahead on. <laughs> I was just talking, hoping I was trying to be as logical as you. Phil, no, you hit right on the head. Him. This, this is uh, this is a game where you have confidence. You beat a team seven times in a row. You feel like you know what we we got these guys number. And like Nate was saying, when you play a team two times in a row every single year, you kind of know their tendencies. You know their personnel. You know their players. Now, granted, there's a new head coach, but. The office coordinator is a guy that you know very well from his time here in Dallas. So the biggest thing for this one is it's what we've been saying about this football team all year long. One, what football team is going to show up? And two, will this football team be able to execute the game plan that's necessary for them to be successful? Because we know that they're putting a game plan in, but we also know what this team has looked like for a lot of the season, not being able to execute the game plan that they need to to go out there and win a football game on Sunday. But it's going to be a dog fight. You bet, you bet your bottom dollar, it's going to be a dog fight. You, you get your two big pit bull, rottweilers, whatever dogs you want to put out there, ain't going to be no poodles. Ain't going to be no poodles out there on Sunday. <laughs> it's going to be a big dog fight. Players see this as a, as a playoff game? We'll have that kind of feel? It's win or go home. Yep. It's literally win or go home. This is, a, this is the pre, pre, pre-playoff game. I know you got a wild card game. This is the pre-playoff game because if you lose this, you essentially, not essentially, you are matter of fact going home. Period. That's just that's just the end of discussion. So this is a playoff game. This is a playoff atmosphere. You should approach this like it, a playoff atmosphere, because if you don't win this football game, you can chuck up the deuces, have the car shipped out to your offseason homes, tell your old lady, we'll book the vacation, let Shannon know Mexico hey, you know is so on funny? board. I mean, that. all those things are happening if you don't win this football game. So you better go into it like it's a playoff game. Let me tell you what. What we need to do, we should have got us some private eyes and check each team, New York and Dallas, and see which team had the most players that are already pre-packed. And those guys, <laughs> got, those guys that's pre-packed, gonna lose the game. <laughs> I'm telling yeah, you, you, you guys, some, check yeah, all the, some check people, all the, check some people all the pre-packed. shipping shop. Yeah, some check. people are pre-packed now. I'm telling you, go and go mm-hmm. and check all the freights. Yeah, that are taking cars from East <laughs> Rutherford, New Jersey, and around the Jersey area to warmer yeah. weather climates. Check those. Yeah. And check the name. Check check the manifolds on those and see. Hey, who who got cars shipping out this week? And that's yeah. that's what you're gonna know. <laughs> yeah. I think you both both you guys played in games that last game came. It was winning out and that yes. kind of thing. I mean, did did you were, were players nervous? Were they excited? Did they feel like they played better? Did they 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 nervous and kind of. You know, hesitant. I mean, how was the feeling in the in the what room you do? That? And coaches have been trying to tell you this all year long. They've been talking like Shannon. I don't care what you do all season long. It's gonna come down to this. You know, this sounds hey, what's like up, Shannon. Mickey? And, and so, huh? I thought, you you doing, I thought you were doing. I thought you were doing Mickey. I'm sorry. No, no. I'm trying to talk like Shannon, a small guy. But uh, if I'm talking like Mickey, that means I will slow down and talk real. And that, slow. But anyway, and that, and that means uh, we can we can leave the room because the show's over because we won't get to talk the rest. of <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, you know what? Forget y'all. Go ahead on talk, Jess. <laughs> I'm froze. <laughs> what is going on today? Oh, what were you gonna say, man? Because you you played the games like this. Were guys, were guys excited? Nah, were they nervous? I'm gonna tell you what. We were excited because we had lost so long. And got the britches beat off us so bad during that whole, that year that we did, did basically what the Cowboys are doing now. And when we started crawling back into this thing, I'm telling you, ain't nothing worse than sitting up at the Cowboy Cafe back in the day with them young ladies next to you, <laughs> drinking and cheering for another team. And that team lets you down. So mm. you will be – these guys after the game at 5 o'clock, they'll be sitting somewhere – on a plane, whatever, back in town, they'll be looking at this game. And they'll be cheering for Philadelphia. And that's a bad feeling, man, because your destiny is not controlled by you. You gave that up 10 games ago. (laughs) You know, so 
But guys are excited. But but guys are excited. I, I will tell you, like guys oh, yeah, are they're excited. excited, man. These, these are the moments you play for. This is the backyard moment you talk about. The five, four, three, two. Like this is that game. This is that game where you're like, yo, this what is, is for all Jeff? the, the five, yeah, four, five, three, four two. three, two. You shoot the basket, you know, in the hamper and stuff like that. This is that type of game that you you talk about when you're young and you and you look for that moment. We always talk about, you know, there's always this discussion about, uh, you, you know, who has the the clutch gene, right? Who has that gene in these big time games and these big time moments who actually come out and perform at their peak and those who kind of crumble under the pressure. This is this is that game when coach is going to go back and watch at the end of the year and say, you know, who showed up? Who, who showed up when it was all on the line? Yeah, see, it's easy to show up when you're the front runner, when you, you know, when you already clinched, it's, you know, but who showed up and who was on top of their game? Who took the time to put the extra study habits in? Who took the time to take care of their body that week? Who took the time to make sure, ask the questions, ask about the assignments? Who was the one out there in practice all week long, making sure that we were ready to go and rubbed up and, 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 and on top of our game for Sunday? Coaches watch that because it's in these moments that legends are made like you this is a legendary moment you can come out of this game and be remembered as the team who was written off and we talked about momentum a couple days ago can this carry into the playoffs you damn right it can you damn right it can guys can get things going all of a sudden it's like uh, for a shooter that basket gets real big like the ocean and you can just throw anything up and it goes in the, you you win a game like this especially in a in a you know, in a good fashion, a good, clean fashion, this can carry momentum for you. This can have guys believing about something greater than what you thought was going to happen a couple of weeks ago. So this is one of those games where legends are formed, where you, where you can kind of make a name for yourself and, and, and start saying, you know what, guys, we got a chance now. We're in. We're in. We, we've got a part. How will they watch the game? They'll, they'll be coming back from New York, so they'll get here. They should get here in time to – to watch the game will they watch it in like position groups together will they watch it alone nah. will they watch it as a whole team how is it just whoever you're friends with home. you'll hang out with i'm going <laughs> home man why i watch with some of my you know if you got close friends on the team you may watch with one or two guys uh but yeah. you're going home man you you want to be in your house focus on this tv where you can say what you want and act how right. you want right you know Cause yep. there's gonna be some cussing and some going and some groaning and some moaning and I can't believe this, you know. Mm -hmm. Either way, whether you win, <laughs> whether they lose and you get in, or they and and you can bet you can you can you can bet your bottom dollar, you know, in between quarters at halftime, you are gonna have you guys gonna be some tweeting. They're gonna be some texting and some. They're gonna be on the speakerphone. Hey, yo, man, did you see that bull? Da, 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 da. They guys gonna be talking back and forth yeah. all game long. So, but yeah, but uh, I'm I'm going home. I don't I don't want to sit with a bunch of other people watching this happen. <laughs> I'm going home. We just got finished playing the game. I want to take a shower and get into my chill clothes. Go into my little living room in my man cave and kick my feet up. You know, order some wing stop. Ch -ch -ch, add that little thing in there. You know, what I'm saying? kick back and chill. <laughs> Nate, you you will be it'll be a long night for you in the studio because if Washington yeah. wins, you guys are going to do an extended show after their game, right? What we'll do is they lose, uh, they lose. We, we'll they do lose. extended show, but what we'll do is uh, we'll take a break, we'll come home, and we'll sit here and, and we'll watch this game. Then we got to go back up there where they decided as a whole that we'll go back up there, win, lose, or draw, and do that last show, man. Oh, so y'all are so doing a weather. I wanna, oh, yeah, I want to drive up there and be happy. I, I'm, I'm like, come on. Come on, Philadelphia. Oh. I want to drive there because I don't want to be driving there. Oh, my God, man. You're doing the show whether, whether they're yeah. in the playoffs oh, or not. Whether they're in there or not, man. Whether oh. they're in there or not, we still got to do the show. But I want to – I felt like a player. Now, I want to be happy. I don't want to be sad. Hey, Nate, you know. they made a liar out of me Monday because they decided – they decided to extend crosstalk at least another week. If win or lose, we're doing a show. Told like you, this. my brother. So Told you get you. ten more dollars. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Cross talking, baby. Congratulations. <laughs> so maybe we'll put in the maybe we'll put in the request to get Jesse Holly on the show. The the famous Dallas Cowboy alumni alumnus Jesse Holly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Think about who? Next guest. <laughs> Slow day in the newsroom. <laughs> All right, let's take our first break. When we come back, let's talk more Giants 
Cowboys and see if we can make it through another show without Nate saying the R word. When we come back on Hanging with the Boys. Is your family a Cowboys family? Have you taken holiday photos at the Star? Was your wedding theme blue and silver? Have you convinced your kids them is spelled with a D? If so, every game day feels like a vacation to you, so treat it like one. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Just like all of you, we at Seeky can't wait until we're back in the stands at full strength cheering on the Cowboys and singing along to our favorite songs again. We're using this time to make discovering, buying, and selling tickets to events in Dallas easier. Plus, every ticket purchased on Seeky is protected by our buyer guarantee, which means you'll get your money back or better if your event is canceled. Guaranteed. Download the Seeky app today, and when the time is right, let's go. Seeky. Grab some OtterBox gear and get ready for hanging with the boys. From rugged venture coolers to tough as nails elevation tumblers, we've got what you need to keep your game day drinks frosty and your football feast ice cold. And with cases, screen protectors, and power accessories, you can defend your phone and stay connected to every play. Gear up at OtterBox.com and amp up the fun of every Cowboys game. That's OtterBox.com. Dear, it's 1908. Don't you think we should get electricity? Hmm, and stop using candles to see at night. It's just electricity lights up the room fast. It's more reliable than candles blowing out, and people seem to love it nationwide. Well, candles are... Dear, did you just run into the wall? Nope. May I have a new candle, please? Historically, switching to new technology is a no-brainer. Today, it's AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure, and nationwide. Switch to AT&T 5G. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan. May not be in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Adjust your cleats, adjust your pads, even adjust your helmet, but seriously, don't adjust your underwear because once it's seen, it cannot be unseen. Tommy John's fabric keeps you cool and dry on the field or in the stands, and now they even have loungewear. Yes, sir. Loungewear. Shop underwear at TommyJohn.com forward slash Cowboys. 15% off your first order. TommyJohn.com forward slash Cowboys. All right. Kurt. You got a whole bunch yes, of sir. stuff to get to today. The last segment is yours, but where would you like to start the second segment? Can I say something right quick, like before y'all start? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I remember when my team that I played for, when we were good enough to look at another team's game plan, and the coach said, We're just going to do what they did. So I'm sitting here <laughs> looking at Baltimore's <laughs> defense and what it's doing to the Giants' defense. And I almost had that thought of like, hey, we just do what Baltimore did. And then we came Reality. Back. Reality. Reality sunk in. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, when y'all played, y'all mm-hmm. had the, the type of offense, really, and defense. But did, did y'all do that on offense? Would you look at a – a team that would gash another team or or have success in the passing game and just copy that exact game plan on offense? And North Turner would design 15 plays or 15 looks for that one play where they got gashed. Like that dude, number 38 was his number for the last scene we played. Mm -hmm. Michael Jaquette. Yeah, that Mm -hmm. dude would have still been at Baylor, man. Severe <laughs> burn, man. Severe. He'll still be at Baylor. They'll be like, it ain't COVID that got him. <laughs> we should be trying to unwrap the gauze off him. It's sticking to him. He burns so bad. <laughs> and, and I'm just joking, y'all. Don't 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 take that serious, please. Because oh, y'all, they always text Jesse to kill me. I don't know if I did good or bad to the next day, but Jesse said he did all right today. <laughs> well, hey, let me ask you this though. You know, the Baltimore plays primarily a three-four defense. The Cowboys are one and four this year against three fours. They're five and five against four three defensive schemes mainly. Their last three games, which they've all won, have been against four threes. They're now facing the Giants, who are primarily three fours. Does that make a big difference? That's that residue that Jesse talked about that's left over. That 4-3, we can practice and play against that. But that 3-4, oh, that's that residue Jesse talking about. 
But it makes no, a it, big difference facing this that, that type of thing? Yeah, what it does is it gives you a, a different dynamic, especially when you're talking about from the tackle perspective, right? Because when you're in that 4-3, you're dealing with someone a little bit bigger than you're dealing with someone in that 3-4. That 3-4, someone's more athletic, more agile, more quicker, a little bit more bend than you're dealing with uh, somebody in that 4-3 who's a guy maybe 270, 280, uh, opposed to a linebacker who's... 240, 250, 260. And so those type of, and now I can start doing different stunts. You know, the guys are dropping in the coverage. You know, so the, the, the players on the field are different. They look different. They play different than what it is when it's a 4-3. So that kind of gives you a, a different dynamic when you're trying to block, when you're trying to get to the second level, when you're trying to slide, st- you know, protection. And Nate is far better at this than I am. But I know that it gives you a different look about where guys are going to be and how this defense is going to uh, eventually morph uh, uh, into its final pieces at the snap of the ball. So it gives you a different look. It gives you something different that you have to work against. Uh, but, I mean, you, you, if, if these coaches, except Kellen Moore, th- these coaches have been in the league for a very long time. So you should be able to know how to handle it and prepare these guys to go up against a 3-4 defense. I'm going to tell you something. It's, a, it's totally different, Kurt and Shannon, when you got Antoine Woods and, and Neville Gallimore down in front of you, and then all of a sudden they take a step and try to go back into coverage. Okay, wow, somebody's coming. But when you got those four linebackers moving around, like Lawrence Taylor and Carl Banks and, and all of those guys, it, it, it could be hell, especially when mm-hmm. they're elite athletes. You don't know who's coming, so you have to change your pattern of how you dropping back, whereas before we could lock in on a man or maybe just a certain area. We had to drop back a yard so we can sometimes see who was coming and try to take it. Now, we'll have a direction where the protection is going, a base direction, but you kind of dropping back trying to catch and see who's coming because – Pittsburgh Steelers used to be notorious for bringing a safety. He would time the snap of the quarterback cadence, and but that safety will hit right up in there on you at the last minute. So it's, it's, it is a big difference because those bodies and those type of athletes are very much different. Was there one, Nate, that you preferred to face over the other one? Oh, I liked it at 4-3 because when you played a good Pittsburgh team, uh, uh, any team that played the 3-4 and they had the right athletes in there, the holes was different. Because basically, a lot of times, the block, the point of attack was me. Because you would have that guy sitting over me. So we running in the middle of the field with lead draw. Or either we'd be taking this power step to the left or the right. And I'm bringing two and they with me. Well, that changes when you got to come with your tackle. That takes you two or three steps out. And if you got a hell of a linebacker, like I'm going to tell you, New England used to kill me with Teddy Bruschi because if I turned my shoulders just a little bit, Teddy Bruschi would come into the V of my neck. And when I got back straight, this kid was jacking me up. So I, I hated that 3 4, man, and especially with all them blitzes. You know, you made you had to study a little extra, and I couldn't hang out at the cafe as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you, you talk about. <laughs> You talk about Teddy Bruschi. I mean, the Giants have Blake Martinez. Is he going to be the, the tough guy to try to corral in all this? He's never going to be fooled. Jesse, Jesse can talk about him. He's never going to be fooled. And he, and he knows how to hit angles. He knows when to take off. You know, a lot of times you see linebackers try to run in. But you'll see, and I, I ain't going to bring the kid name up. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Try to run through a hole and miss the tackle altogether. Well, this dude know how to run through a hole and make it hit you for a loss. Blake Martinez is smart. He's a tackling machine. He's got 140 tackles right now. And I bet you a bunch of them is solos. And not and they're not eight yards down the field, all of them. <laughs> no, I am I'm a I'm a huge Blake Martinez fan simply because he does everything right. And he's not going to wow you with speed or wow you with power. He's going to do everything right. He's going to be at the point of attack. He's going to shed blocks. He's going to read his keys. He's going to make sure his angles is there. His alignment assignment is going to be correct. And then at the, at the end of it all, at the end of it all, when it comes to that last moment, right, it comes to the Joe meeting the Joe in the hole, whether that be running back, quarterback, uh, tight end, whoever it may be, when it comes to the finishing product, bringing the guy down in a tackle, he doesn't miss many of them, if any of them. He finishes the job. He lines up right. He reads his keys. He gets downhill. And when he gets the point of contact, 9.999% of the time, you are coming down. You're not, he's not going to whiff. 
He's not going to arm tackle. He's not going to close his eyes. And that's what I appreciate about a guy like Blake Martinez is that he doesn't have the, the you know, he doesn't look like Jalen Smith, not, you know, who looks like he'd been built in a lab, right? He's not going to run the fastest. He's not going to be the tallest. But when it comes down to him doing what you need him to do, and that's making the tackle at the line of scrimmage, behind the line of scrimmage, a little bit past the line of scrimmage, like Nate said, it ain't going to be eight yards down the field. He will be there and you will come down. Is it, is it the guards then that got to get to that second level and get to him? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, a guy like what him, a- when I played against a guy like Blake Martinez, I didn't play no games with him. Whenever I got a chance to, to, to rustle him or to maul him, I did. Because the way you beat a kid like that is you got to literally physically beat him down. You ain't never going to mentally beat him down, but you got to just wear him down. Because if you don't, late in the game, he'll make that play. For that, for that one yard loss or that no gain, and you'd be like, wow, Blake Martinez. You, and you would say, you might have, not Blake Martinez, you know, but it'd be that one guy. So you have to maul him. More like we used to have to do Sam Mills for New Orleans. He had to maul this kid, man. Because if you didn't, he was going to make the play. Hmm. So you, you got him in the middle, and then on the line, you've got Dexter Lawrence is 6'4, 342. Dalvin Thompson's 6'3, 317. Leonard Williams is 6'5, 302. I mean, do you just stick with the game plan and try to pound it up the middle, or do you got to work to the outside on these guys? Yeah. You, when you're running a 3 4, it's built to make you run everything up between the tackles. They want you up in between the tackles. Hmm. You know, because you don't, you know. Uh, you got those linebackers outside setting the edge. So you want to get them back up into the middle. Uh, Leonard is playing nice. He got, what, 8.5 sacks. Uh, just hard to say, man. It's hard to say. It's whatever the coaches see, man. But they're going to have to run the ball uh, effectively. You know, I'm talking about 3.4, 3.5, so that – Coach, Coach Cullen Moore can have opportunity to call the pass plays he want. I'm just believing, Kurt, that – and I'm believing this so much, man. And, Jesse, you slow me down if I get out of hand, which I do, normally do a lot of times. Can't nobody stop our receivers, homeboy. And 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 and, and, and our quarterback has been on fire. He, be, he throw a little bit sometime off kilter. But for the most part, our quarterback has been on fire, man. And the running back thing is leveled out now. It's just no way the Giants should be able to touch our receivers. They don't have enough back there, my friend. And their pass rush is good, but it ain't great. All they got is 34 sacks. Just I was going to ask you that. With with this offense playing different than they played the first time, the Giants, you know, Dalton's got it. Looks like he's got it going. The offensive line's gelling, playing a lot better. The, the, The running game is different than the first time they met. The receivers are the receivers. Does that give the Cowboys an advantage over the Giants because they've seen kind of the same look from the Giants on defense, but the Giants haven't seen this version of the offense. Does that give you a little bit of an edge if you're the Cowboys? I think the Cowboys just personnel-wise have an edge. But this is the game where we talk about Kellen Moore and his inexperience. You don't get cute. Like, this isn't the game for you to get cute. This isn't the game for you to come in here and all of a sudden say, hey, we're going to trick them and we're going to do something completely different. No, if, 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 if my guy is going to beat his guy, let, let, let's just go ahead and beat him. And you don't have to get cute in these situations. you got to go ahead and, and put in a game plan that's going to be conducive and productive for you. One of the things that I do love what the Cowboys have done with their offense, and in particular with Andy Dalton, is his ability to get the ball out of his hands quicker. Earlier in the year, you saw him hold the ball a lot. He's notoriously been known for holding the ball maybe just a little bit too long. And so getting those shorter routes out, the slants, the hitches, so that the ball is out of his hands so that you're not taking the hits and the ball is you're not being sacked and the ball is not being deflected. And now your offensive lineman has a chance to kind of get on their blocks, get their blocks finished, and the ball is gone before excuse me, guys like Leonard Williams and, 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 and guys like that are collapsing that pocket. That's one thing that they've done really well in the last couple of games that's led to them having success in the passing game. So I think you have to kind of still be along those lines and in that vein of, hey, we got to get the ball out quicker to our playmakers. We got to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands because we don't want to have this offensive line, which is okay. It's a decent offensive line. It's not great. They, they've improved from being trash. Um, 
But oh my I, God! Uh, they did. They really, were Jesse? <laughs> they Re- from really, the Jesse? Really? They did. They, 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 you were having. They, they, you were bringing the heat. I was going to go. Amen and glory to Jesse. It, no, you can still do that. You can still do that. There's, there's still room <laughs> for you to do that. There's still a lot of room for you to do that. Uh, okay. but, but what what it is? I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin that confidence, and I don't want to ruin that by now giving them a game plan that's going to lead to them being less successful. And that's yes. five and seven step drops and Kellen Moore, I mean, Kellen Moore, excuse me, Andy Dalton holding the football longer than we want him to hold it because trying to hold up against those front, like you said, six, six uh, guys are 300 plus pounds that, and no, these are athletes. These are at limit. Winter is, what is an athlete. Dexter Lawrence, an athlete. These guys are big, strong, physical, fast athletes. So I want to be able to get the ball out before those guys get their rhythm and get going. I want them frustrated. I want them being like, God dang, I was, I'm almost there. But the ball was going so quick that they didn't have a time to get there. You start doing all these seven-step drops, you know, a large majority of the game, and, and, and you'll see a different outcome from your quarterback because he'll be getting hit, his arm will be getting hit, the pocket will be getting pushed, it'll be collapsing. So continue on that trend that you've been going on, getting the ball out quickly to your receivers and you know Andy you Dalton, have an advantage there Andy Dalton even addressed that after the game in his post-game press conference this week he he mentioned getting the ball out quicker was the key to the game you know we talked about it when he first became the quarterback after the first couple of games get it out faster find a way to do like what they did with Eli in New York hit that back foot and the ball comes out so that's a great point Jesse something else that was said in the post-game press conference Amari Cooper a quote from him we all have the potential to go out there and just dominate a game. When you're a receiver, and, and Jesse, you know, you know, between CD, Amari, and Michael Gallup, one of you has the potential to go off for 150, 200 yards, three touchdowns at any given moment. How, does that give you confidence as a, as a receiving group? And what does that do for just the offense in general when you know you've got three studs that could all be number one somewhere else that can just man, match up man to man and wherever the mismatch is, that's where you go because anybody can beat you. Absolutely. You get super excited about that because you now know might be your that day. team, <laughs> that team, no matter what they do, they don't have three good enough corners to match our three good enough wide receivers. I don't care who they are. They don't, you, you don't you don't have three, you know, uh, uh, Gilmore's on your team. You don't have three Tyron Matthews on your team. You don't have three whatever corner that you want to name. Jalen Ramsey's on your team. You may have one. Okay, cool. And he may go with Amari. Okay, fine. They leave him with Amari. Now I got. To potentially, I got a 1A, a 1B, and a 1C against your 1A, you got a B, and you got a C. So I like my chances on finding a matchup throughout the game that we can exploit. And so, because they all have that ability, Michael Gallup, Amari Cooper, and CD Lamb all, all have that, that, they have that A1 ability. No team has three corners that's going to be able to stay with these guys the entire game. It all comes down to what game plan are we using to get them the football. You don't, you, you, there's a reason why you see those guys, they like, hey, he missed practice, he missed practice. No. When guys know I got a chance to go out there and eat, I want to be at practice, I want to be in the number, I want to be in these reps because I do not want to get forgotten about when Sunday comes because I know the likelihood of me having a mismatch is very, very high, whether it be in the slot, whether we be in bunch, whether we be in two by two, three by one, however you want to, however you want to break it down. And we've seen it at a, a number of times throughout the season where this guy went off of 150, that guy went off of 150. We had two guys go off 400 because the the level of talent that we have at the wide receiver position outmatches anything across the league where guys can match up on the defensive back position. There you I go, like zero man. When Amari gets off early, it is it is is a world of difference. It's a different you, game. Amari it's a different game. Gets off early, and I and I and I believe that. I, I heard you all last year, Jesse, kind of was in denial. I've heard guys said this year when Mar- when Amari has a threat to get off early, everybody else is in trouble. The other here's here's why. Crushing. Here's why, Nate. Because nine times out of ten, Amari's going up against Q, uh, uh, CB1. Right, he's going to go against their, their number one corner. So if he's eating against the number one corner, it really throws the game plan off from the the, the f- defensive coordinator position because he might say, "Hey, we're going to zone everything up on over here. We're going to go man to man over here with Ramsey or Slay or somebody like that." And now Amari's winning there. 
that that throws off everything that they wanted to do because you thought you had a lockdown wash position where you could say, hey, that that's washed. We're going to take that away. And now we have to win over here with zone and some other number stuff. But when Amari gets off, that just opens up the floodgate because you're saying, wait, we were going to go man over here and zone everything else off or whatever we were going to do. Now we can't because he's eating early on. Now we start doing more zone stuff. Oh, here we go. We zone across the board now. There's uh, there's CD. Oh, oh, we that, that safety came over to CD and Amari's side. There's Michael Gallup one on one on the backside for a go route. So all these things come into play when you have a number one. When you have wide receiver one go off early in the football game, it opens up opportunity for everyone. Slow down, else. Jesse. Kurt is typing all of this. Is he going slow enough, Kurt? Are you? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking, trying to find a Cooper stat. <laughs> I was hoping you couldn't hear me. Hey, what? I'm trying to find Cooper. No, I'm watching Cooper you concentrate. No, I'm just watching you. I'm watching your face. That's how I know you're typing, man. Oh, it ain't okay. that we hear thought, you. Oh, okay. What was it? What was it? The, the first, or, the first or second play uh, on offense on Sunday? They they threw that what 30, 40 yard pass to Amari down the sideline. Yes, and I got knew him it was on then. Right. I knew so, it was on. I'm like, it's, this game is on now. So listen yeah. to Jesse and listen to Nate. And if you see on the first drive, if Amari Cooper is involved and has either a big play or they get him the ball more than three, two or more times in the first drive, the Cowboys are going to win by 60. There you go. We're going to take our <laughs> last wow. break. When we come back, Kurt, you got it for eight minutes. It's your oh. show on Hanging with the Boys. No. Yeah. Just like all of you, we at Seeky can't wait until we're back in the stands at full strength cheering on the Cowboys and singing along to our favorite songs again. We're using this time to make discovering, buying, and selling tickets to events in Dallas easier. Plus, every ticket purchased on Seeky is protected by our buyer guarantee, which means you'll get your money back or better if your event is canceled. Guaranteed. Download the Seeky app today, and when the time is right, let's go. Seeky. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Grab some OtterBox gear and get ready for hanging with the boys. From rugged venture coolers to tough as nails elevation tumblers, we've got what you need to keep your game day drinks frosty and your football feast ice cold. And with cases, screen protectors, and power accessories, you can defend your phone and stay connected to every play. Gear up at OtterBox.com and amp up the fun of every Cowboys game. That's OtterBox.com. Dear, it's 1908. Don't you think we should get electricity? Hmm, and stop using candles to see at night. It's just electricity lights up the room fast. It's more reliable than candles blowing out, and people seem to love it nationwide. Well, candles are... Dear, did you just run into the wall? Nope. May I have a new candle, please? Historically, switching to new technology is a no-brainer. Today, it's AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure, and nationwide. Switch to AT&T 5G. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan. May not be in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Hanging with the Boys. DCU, get the ultimate fan experience for the ultimate Cowboys fan. Join Dallas Cowboys United, presented by Globe Life, starting at just 20 bucks. Join now at dallascowboys.com forward slash United. And before we turn this thing over to Kurt, I want to give a shout out to at Milton Zen. He's been tweeting us the last, I guess, week or so. Sent us a few different tweets. And yesterday he said, Jesse, you are a motivator. You know the game. At your age... Not married, you could come in the NFL as a wide receiver coach, special teams coach, etc., and in six years make a name, make some money, and end up on the NFL network. Never say never. <laughs> I'm good. Jesse's good. All right. And so is Kurt. <laughs> Kurt, you got six minutes. Uh, Take it away. You got a bunch to minutes. get okay. to. Well, I don't know about that. I do have one. First question for you guys here is that, you know, the Cowboys defense has been racking up the turnovers lately. For whatever reason, they're on fire. The Giants actually have only one turnover in their last three games, so they're on a dry spell. Is that 
can Dallas take advantage of that in any way? Can they say, oh, we can we can maybe try a little, be a little riskier, or try this or that because just because they're not coming up with turnovers right now? Mm mm. Talking about the Giants? No, don't don't play no games. Don't don't no. don't don't <laughs> don't don't do that. No, because if, if this was a KC team or a Ravens team, I would say yes. This is a Dallas team. I say no. Don't. Go out there and do what you do and be good at what you do. I mean, because we, we just we just a small ways away from failure. A small <laughs> ways away. And I hate to say that and be negative because y'all know me. I'm, I'm very positive when it comes to the Cowboy, but do not play. This is a delicate recipe. It ain't but one way you can fix grandma's apple pie. You do anything and deviate, deviate from anything, uh, them, them ingredients, and you can have a disaster. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> they need to, they need to play it safe. Then Dalton. Uh, no, just do know. be do what you've been doing, and, and, yeah. and Kellum has been doing, calling some nice plays. I mean, uh, he's been aggressive. He's been going forward with all of his plays. We have not had no special teams, uh, bad plays. Just c- continue to do what you continue to build on this. Um, on this confidence that you've given these players, defensive players, you got all every week. It's already right get turnovers, but continue to tackle well and bring people down. You know, don't don't think okay, oh no, we're just gonna go ahead and get a big hit, and all of a sudden you hit the running back, you take a step back and go 85 yards. You got to continue to play hard and try to play smart because we haven't stopped nobody defensively. We just we just got some turnovers. Hmm. And, uh, you talked about Kellen Moore. Jesse was pretty critical of this in the last game. He's more the offense has done great overall, but they still struggle in the red zone. Um, last week they're only two for five scoring in the red zone. They're 29th in the NFL this year. At this point, I mean, you're going to the last game, maybe playoffs. Is it is what it is? I mean, can they do anything different to try to shake that up some? You got to score points. I mean, you you have to find ways. Uh, while this foot, while this game of football is a complex game and it has a lot of different uh, ins and outs to it, it, it sometimes boils down to be very, very simple. And when you get in the red zone, you can't out cute yourself. You can't trick yourself. Just you got to be able to get those are the that's the money area of the field. So when you get down on the two yard line, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to roll. I don't know. No offense to Andy Dalton, but I, I don't want to roll out the slow white guy. I'm sorry. I don't want to have him <laughs> on the bootleg. I don't want to get cute and try to have him on the bootleg rolling out when you know what? My running game is going pretty well down here. I'm on the two yard line. It's kind of you know second or third down, whatever. Let, let's second down. Let's let's try to give the ball to 21 and see if he can't plow his way in there from two yards out. Don't 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 get cute. We get cute and we try to we try to trick trick it up and all that kind of stuff. And we don't have an offense like Nate was saying. This KC, yeah, they may miss the opportunity in the red zone this time, but you know they're going to be back in the red zone six more times and will probably convert six more times while they're in the red zone. We don't get there that very often. So when we get there, we got to make sure that we we end with touchdowns and not kicking field goals because of things that we did. Right? It's one thing if they do something to stop us, but it's something that we do like rolling. Andy Dalton out and trying to get him or on some trickery type stuff. Don't 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 do that. Don't 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 get down there and all of a sudden you go haywire and, and you you. And lose you know what's so funny? When he rolled out, he had a clear path, but the speed of the other guy sucked it up so quick. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when he rolled out, it looked it good, but after that, because I knew he was, I said he gonna throw this. And all of a sudden, yeah, what, he was what, trying. No. To, was it Blake wow. Bell was supposed to roll out with him and didn't? Maybe. That's what I'm saying. That- like, like, why am I putting Blake Bell and Andy Dalton in that situation? Let's not do that. Let's 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 not put this this very rare and precious red zone opportunity on the shoulders of Blake Bell and Andy Dalton. Let's let's not do that. Let's let's get some guys in here that we 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 feel pretty confident in. Let's put this put on the shoulders of Zeke, or hell, Tony Pollard, or Omar, something like that. I, I don't want to put it on Blake Bell in a situation where we don't get to the red zone right. often, we aren't successful when we get here. I don't want to trick it up with Blake Bell and Andy Dalton rolling out to the flats, trying to do whatever it is they were trying to yeah. do. So so Kellen's thinking is, everybody's focusing on Zeke, I'm going to trick it up. And you're like, we're going to win or lose with our best guys. That's it. Especially down here on the two-yard line. Okay, you know Zeke is coming. Cool. You, you tell you, <laughs> Right, Kurt, Nate? Right, that was like, so like, simple, Kurt. 
Goodness. And the dog want to trick it up. It just want to just win with our best guys. Yeah, the one we gave ninety million dollars to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like that, that's that's, so, there's a level of pride when it comes to offensive linemen. When we get when we get into the when we you know, there's a portion of practice when you go down there and you're doing you know first team offense versus first team defense and you're doing goal line. Right. That's pride. That's pride. That, that's nothing but pride. Right. It's not. We ain't we ain't going nowhere. Ain't much field out here. It's two yards between you and pay dirt. I, I'm just going like Nate was saying earlier. I'm going to dog you. I'm going to dog you right. and drive you into the – I'm going to drive you into the end zone. Because if I drive you into the end zone, then that means that all the running back got to do is come up my butt and he's in the end zone for a touchdown. I, I didn't got to do all that. It ain't, no, it ain't fancy down there. Ain't nothing fancy down there in the trenches in the red zone. It, it, is, it is big, sloppy, greasy – Friction. Get it on, get it on, baby. <laughs> get it on, get it on. That's it. So you know what? Put your Tommy we, John's on and get greasy. We get will greasy. leave you today with those words of wisdom by Jesse Holly. All get that greasy. running back got to do is come up my butt and he's in no, the I, I was hoping nobody <laughs> caught that. I was hoping nobody <laughs> caught that, Shannon. <laughs> we, 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 we will leave, fire all of us. We will, leave, we will leave you on that note, and we will be back tomorrow with a very special. You know Shannon ain't missing that. By that time, we've been on pulling Shannon out of them guys' butt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So if you are running back, all you got to do is put your face in, in, the, in the offensive lineman's butt and just follow him right into the end zone. That, 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 that's a, that is a Touchdown. recipe for success right there. So we will not yeah. be doing any of that on this show, no matter how successful it would make this show. We will right, you do it for money. We will not be running up anybody's butt on this show. So, all right, <laughs> Kurt, Nate, Jesse, tomorrow a very special New Year's Eve show. Let's don the Miller Lite sweaters one last time. Okay. Let's send 2020 out with a very thank you for being here, but we're glad to see you go. Bring on 2021. Bring on the Giants. <laughs> bring on that team in Washington. Let the Eagles smash them on Sunday. We are going to bring it. To you tomorrow, we, we need to do something special. I don't know what it is, but we'll do something crazy tomorrow. Chris Beam, think of something awesome we can do tomorrow because we're there's no talent on this show without you. So <laughs> get us something good tomorrow. All right. Tune in tomorrow to see what Chris Beam has in store for us. Fellas, it's been real. Jesse, Nate, Kurt, Chris Beam, see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for listening to another episode of Hanging with the Boys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!